Hey guys, just a continuation of the previous example. A quick reminder, our sign conventions, okay? So now we're up to the third cut and I want to cut from the right. So just bear into account that the shear force points upwards when cutting from the right. We have a clockwise moment and our axial force end points out to the left, okay? Now just um, the reason being is the reason they're opposite to cutting from the left is so that they balance each other out, okay? So they have to be in the opposite direction, clearly. So now we're up to the third cut and let me show you how this one's done when we cut from the right. So the third cut is drawn here. You see if we drew cut one and if we cut it from the left then we'd have to draw the first cut and the second cut as well. And this gives us much more calculations and it's more tedious and it's we're more likely to make mistakes. Whereas if we cut from the right all we have to technically include was the reaction force by the roller and the UDL. So if you look at the original diagram over here, um, if, if we cut from the right then the first cut just includes the roller and the UDL, okay? And the span, sorry, the interval of the cut is from 0 meters, which is over here, since this would be the 0 mark if we're cutting from the right, because it starts from here and ends up 4 meters to the left, which ends just before the UDL ends, okay? So that's our third cut drawn in. It's also a function of x when we cut from the right, same story. The only thing that differs here is the sign convention, shear force points up, anti -clock sorry, clockwise moment, and an axial force that points out to the left, okay? So now we just do normal equilibrium.